We're back with a breakfast in Plus TV Africa. We uh, have a first uh, guest uh, raring to go right here on the breakfast deal. Your state chapter of the All Progressives Congress and uh, the ruling party in the state, the People's Democratic Party, are currently at loggerheads over alleged plans to change locations of polling units. Um, you might be wondering how other parties change po po the po location of polling units. Well, the PDP in 2019 defeated the APC during the uh, governorship election in that state. And then the then PDP candidate engineer Shane Markinde defeated Bayo Adelabu, the then APC governorship candidate. Uh, the APC alleged that the PDP and INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission, Nigeria's electoral umpire, are planning to change locations of polling units ahead of the 2023 general elections uh, in a bid to win the elections. Uh, but the PDP, in its reaction, insisted that the allegation by the APC has shown that the party has already uh, admitted defeat. Interesting development uh, in the policy. We have joining us this morning a lawyer and political analyst. He is uh, Emeka Okbar. He joins us via Zoom from Lagos. Uh, Mr. Okbar, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, is this is this a strange, uh, strange development? You know, the the idea that INEC is changing the locations of some polling units uh, with Oyo State as a, a case study. Sounds strange, um, but. All right, um, the network has done a fast one on us. We apologize. It's uh, almost normal when it comes to uh, the internet these days in this part of the world. But um, uh, we hope to get to have Ms. Opara uh, back for his analysis on this, asking if it's uh, a strange to him uh, that uh, this may be the case. It's an allegation by the Upper Progressives Congress in Oyo State. Uh, Emek Opara, are you back with us, please? Okay, uh, if you can hear me, sir, kindly unmute, unmute your, yourself so that uh, uh, we can hear you. Uh, we can't hear you from this side. All right, uh, well, whilst uh, a, t a technical guy is trying to get him back on, we'll continue this conversation. But mercy, <laughs> I think the first thing the, uh, the Leonard uh, gentleman, like we called him, said was that um, this is uh, strange to him. You know, uh, and uh, the politics of the day is getting heated. Of course, Shea McKinney moved on to become the governor uh, of Oyo State. And what the uh, the APC in Oyo State feels is that they're thinking that he's using his power of incumbency to uh, uh, connive with INEC to change, uh, shift the goalposts. You know, when they say he shift the goalposts, I don't know what you think about this, but it's quite interesting what's going on playing out in Oyo State. Um, well, you know, usually this is actually what happens, uh, the kind of politics that's been practiced in Nigeria, or I would like to say Nigeria, let, let's stay with Nigeria. Let's not delve into other parts of uh, the continent or maybe the world. So we see that people would always move from one particular post to another, especially when their interest is not represented. And so at the end of the day, it becomes an interest factor. And so for a time where, you know, you have your interests not being represented, then it becomes, you know, not okay for you. You move away to the next one and where your interests can be represented. And if your interest is not represented in that particular party or that strata, you move away. We've been told that we have uh, Emeka Okpara back with us. Yes. Uh, uh, Barista, yes. You were saying before we lost, we lost you yeah, um, that this is not strange to you. So please proceed. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's strange in one way, but because this is Nigeria, uh, one can say uh, anything can happen. Uh, but if you look at it, now let, let, let's go to the, um, uh, the theory of it. If such a thing happens, that will be a form of gerrymandering, an extreme form of it that is not really, that is very subtle. But then, um, the Electoral Act does not allow, in practical terms, uh, you cannot move uh, any polling unit into a private residence or a private house. There are specific places mentioned that where the, uh, the uh, 
you cannot move, you cannot uh, cite um, a polling booth. So it has to be in a public place, a place accessible without late or hindrance, without hindrance to the public. So if, say in a locality, it is, let's say it is moved from point A to point B, Uh, 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 Mr. Opara, can you hear us, please? Uh, we, we've lost the uh, audio connection with you. I think it's uh, still the same network issue. Um, but it's, it's quite interesting, you know, to, to see and to note what um, the Oyo State APC is saying. You know, people feel that APC, since, I mean, the, the president is an APC man, they're the ruling party in the country, that APC around the country is um, the on top of things, you know, Messi. But it's a different situation in your where the APC is actually crying <laughs> and complaining, you know. So that's the beauty of democracy. You might be in charge at a federal level, but then you go down to the states, it's a different case altogether. We can look at even maybe River State, where the APC has also been in the position. They don't even have a, a single uh, <laughs> elected position or office, uh, to, you know, till now uh, from the last election. So these are the dynamics of... Um, of, of democracy in, in Nigeria and in the world at large. Um, it could be ruling at one level and being the opposition uh, at the other level. But it's an allegation uh, that uh, there's a connivance between the All Progressives, Cong between the uh, People's Democratic Party, which is the ruling party in all your state, and uh, INEC, INEC. And, but it's an irony, well, if you want to call it that, you might call it that, that um, the APC in, in in uh, Oyo State is calling on the INEC chairman to look into it, you know. So it therefore probably suggests mercy that um, this is not uh, an entire totally INEC, uh, uh, you know, allegation on, on INEC as a whole, but an allegation on INEC staff in, in Oyo State. And uh, like we've seen, INEC itself has penalized some of its staff in states ac across the country, for instance, in uh, a very dear Kwaibom state recently, an INEC staff who had been uh, uh, dismissed by the, U the, uh, the commission had to take the commission to court, to National Industrial Court, asking that he be reinstated. We'll talk about that some more um, uh, if the, the time permits us to do that. Uh, but this is, just, this is just to say that sometimes you might have allegations going uh, to in the way of INEC, but not as, uh, on INEC as a whole, you know, maybe specific staff in the state, uh, 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 you know, your state uh, offices of INEC. Emeka uh, uh, can you hear us, please? Are you back with us? Yes, yes. Okay, so please yes. proceed, continue with the point you were making. As I was saying, um, it's easier in theory, but in practice, it's not really uh, workable for such a thing to be done and uh, for it to constitute uh, a problem to any political party. Because you cannot, if you move it to a private residence or a private place that is not accessible to the public, uh, then it becomes a serious issue. But it cannot be done. And then, uh, in, in that case, the INEC official would have contravened his oath of uh, neutrality, which uh, every INEC officer must uh, swear to. So, but in practice, if you go, you find out that um, electoral units, electoral, I mean, electoral, um, uh, uh, such polling booths and all that are in public places. So I do not know where the hula valor is coming from. Now, if you come, if you go to the, the, the constitution, if you go to the constitution, the constitution, uh, shadow, shadow three to the constitution gives power to, to INEC to organize, undertake uh, elections and all that, all these elections. And in the Electoral Act in 2022, Section 2, also gives it additional powers in respect of referendum and some other organizing civic, uh, uh, civic uh, 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 education to the public and all that. It nowhere, you have, it nowhere specifically provides for the sighting, nowhere does the sighting of alleged boots and all that given directly to INEC. But you could say it is 
it is so uh, logical that it is what is called part of the incidental and supplemental powers. When a specific power is given, uh, there are some powers that are read into it for such body given any power to be able to perform the specific powers. And those are the incidental powers, incidental and supplemental powers. And that is where INEC comes in here in respect of citing uh, polling, polling booths and all that. And, but the, and the law specifically bars INEC from citing them in places that are private, in places that are uh, uh, meant for only certain religions and all that. They are only to be cited in public places. If you go to the, to the villages, to the towns, they are always in town uh, at the centers, uh, town, town halls and all that. If you move it from there, let's say you move it from there to uh, a few meters away, under the present uh, system that, we are, that, that is being practiced, would you prevent somebody, if you move it there from voting, would you actually cast the vote of other people since now we are we're going to use you are using fingerprints uh we are, we are using electronic uh, partly electronic uh, voting so how would it affect any party I'm, I'm i'm just asking if for example it is done and the, the point is there has this is just an allegation there hasn't been anything so far to uh they haven't named any particular INEC officer they haven't come up with any specific facts to buttress that allegation. So I think it's just mere allegation because at this moment, some people can wave it off as being laughable. Being laughable. And uh, INEC is a federal body and APC is in control of the federal institutions. So it's, it's even more curious to now see APC saying that uh, DDP um in in that state that they are they are colluding with some INEC officials to uh do that kind of thing so at the end of the day what what's what's um this can be taken serious uh if um if uh, they they come up with specific facts if they come up with uh, uh facts that can be investigated then it will everybody will look up to INEC uh, the INEC uh chairman to do the needful. For now, I think they are just uh, politicking. That's the way I look at it. Well, it sounds like a fee right there. But l let's get straight to, to it now. Uh, I mean, if it's anything to go by uh, in Mecca, what would, the, what would be the implication? What would this mean if, you know, polling units are changed? I mean, let's say that it's possible to change polling units because... I have registered in a certain polling unit or transferred from a certain polling unit to another polling unit. Is it that we're going to have a creation of another polling unit? But what's the implication for this if there's anything to go by? Uh, first of all, there is a difference between moving polling units, the address of the polling unit, and, <coughs> excuse me, and changing the um, the place where a particular voter, the polling unit a particular voter is attached to. That's a big difference. Now, if you change uh, where I'm, I'm supposed to uh, vote in, um, in uh, a polling unit B and you change it to polling unit A without informing me, with, without giving me adequate information to know that I'm no longer voting in unit B, I'm voting, going to vote in Unit A. That if it, if this becomes pervasive, that is something that to be complained about. It is a serious thing. It's a serious thing. But if in theory, in theory, uh, this uh, is changed, uh, a polling unit, uh, the address is changed, and uh, there is information given to the public that for one reason or the other uh, is possible that is in front of a house that has been demolished, uh, because I know in some places, it could be in, the, in front of a private house, but not in a private house. Like in Lagos, you see some places, 
just a particular number one A of this particular street, uh, there is a tree there and people come there, they vote. People know there over the years that this is where they come. Those who fall under that unit, they, that's where they come to vote. And they move it to number seven, front of number seven. Now, the important thing is for INEC to advertise that in time. Before the election, everybody should know. And that is why you go there to see to make sure that your, your name appears. And when you go there, you go to number one, and it's no longer there. You will see people going to number seven. They say, oh, it's been moved to number seven. And you go there, and you see the list displayed there. And you know that it's now on number seven. That's a different thing. If, you, if it's done that way, there's still nothing. There's nothing. Uh, I mean, for one reason or the other, um, INEC could do that kind of thing. But if it becomes pervasive as for, to, to the level that a reasonable person will see it as a systematic way of making people not to know in time where they ought to go to vote, and that you pass information to certain uh, people of uh, certain members of a political party, the same information is not passed to some other political parties, then there is reason to, to uh, complain. There is serious reason to complain. All right. All right. Uh, but first, uh, INEC had um, uh, informed Nigerians last year that the number of polling units in the country had remained unchanged since 1996. Uh, since 1996, you had um, uh, 119,973 polling units in Nigeria since 1996, and the situation hadn't changed to accommodate uh, more than 50 million registered voters uh, at the time. Uh, in 2019, Nigeria had about 84 million registered voters, and the number of polling units still remained the same. And so, therefore, they put their case forward uh, uh, you know, for the need to decongest uh, the existing uh, polling units by expanding you know, the polling units. So they, they, they did that last year, and nobody complained. INEC also relocated some polling units you know, uh, from places of worship, you know, churches, mosques, uh, shrines, and the politicians' houses. They did that and move them to places where they are allowed under the law to, 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 to be located, including um, uh, palaces of traditional rulers. So that has been done. And um, what INEC is saying right now is that this allegation by the All Progressives Congress in Oyo State is simply uh, hogwash. It's not true. It's a lie. It's nothing like that has happened. So, so <laughs> I think that, that answers our question. But what do you say to that? and these other facts that I've laid on the table? Well, like, like I said, um, um, I, I wouldn't totally dismiss uh, APC's allegation, but if uh, something has to be done with it, I think they have to uh, come up with uh, more facts, verifiable facts. Uh, this, at this level, is mere allegation, and um, one could say, well, uh, uh, INEC is right by calling it hogwash, but if the uh, APC wants us to um, go beyond that, we, we should have more facts. They should name names. If they have um, um, more facts that could be verified, not just to say it, because anybody could come up and say what they've said. Uh, there's nothing that can uh, be uh, discovered from what they, they've said so far. Nothing. No, but, but, uh, we but, could, yeah. Uh, to, yeah, the, the, the spokes, yes, the spokesperson for INEC in, in Oyo State has said that um, they, they have never had any plan. Uh, they have not done anything about shifting, you know, polling units. And that, um, you know, like I just said, they expanded polling units last year and they relocated polling units this year and they informed everyone. Um, so maybe the APC... Uh, maybe PDP is right by saying the APC is just trying to score political points in Oyo State. But in, in the event that this allegation, you know, we should take it seriously. Um, it, it, with, with, with the new electoral law that we have in the country and uh, the uh, introduction of, of certain technologies to ensure that, you know, voters are accredited, accredited 
um, using technology, we have the bimodal voter accreditation system. Um, will any of these tactics work? Because people will still find their way to where some, it could be argued, to where the voting centre is, the polling unit is, and they, they will vote. That, that is the point. Since we have, uh, we cannot cite uh, these units in private places, we can't cite them in places of worship, they can only be in public places. Look at it practically. Can you actually hide where people are voting? Is it possible? And if you, if you, if you, if you put it in a private place, who will have access to it? it? I mean, it's not practicable. I mean, these allegations um, I, 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 you know, against the background of uh, the technologies you mentioned that uh, are being adopted now, they, 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 they make no sense. Because uh, people in, a, in any town or in any community, any, any vicinity, you cannot hide where voting is taking place. And when somebody comes, whichever political party he has uh, the interest to vote for, he will still vote if his uh, name is uh, uh, in the register. I mean, uh, is this not something we should uh, worry about? There are certain things that could come up, some, some allegations they will make and... Uh, and uh, people will take it much more serious. But this, no. Right. I, I don't think it apply with people. All right. Indeed, though, in the words of uh, the, the head of uh, voter education, public gender, and civil society of Aina Kinoyo State, uh, Mrs. Rosemary Alaba Adeni, her words were, quote, uh, there is no iota of truth in that allegation at all. Uh, I'm the one who used the word hogwash, <laughs> just for want of a better word. She says there's no iota of truth in that allegation at all. Um, I guess we'll see, Mercy, see what happens. Uh, Anik has answered. I think that, that, that is that about this. Um, we'd like to thank you very much, and make up our uh, lawyer and political analyst for joining us. Uh, we have a lot of these things that will come up ahead of the 2023 election. Let's see how that goes. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Messi, I think uh, uh, they have answered the question. And I guess said, but the APC, no, your state will still insist that. Um, I'm sure they will still insist they have credible information. Is it politics at play? Is there anything to it? Time will tell. Right? You know, but usually with our space, should we actually leave any stone unturned? There's another question that you have to ask. Okay. Yes. So, I, 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 for, for me, I think that. For whatever it is, we should pay attention. For instance, okay, let me not cite that example. It would just be that there's probably an intel that there might just be an attack on you. But but, 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 but should we not pay attention to that? The, 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 the learned gentleman asked the question, is it possible? Eric has a list of polling units. You can go check them. I can go check them. Even the new ones they added to expand, they call it expansion. And then the relocation they did. This information is verifiable. People know where they're going to vote. If anyone tries anything, it's just simple to be saying, like, hey, this is what happened. They, you can't do it. They will reorder a, a revolt or they'll cancel the election there. I don't know about cancelling. Maybe that may be the play. But let's see. Let's see. Since Anak has said, you know what, there's nothing like that, we'll wait to hear from the Oyo State APC. Well, that's the size of it. We'll take a break now. When we return, we'll be looking at a second conversation right here. Please stay with us.